Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm super excited to be talking about one of my new favorite series of all time. And that would be An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors or the Risen Kingdoms trilogy. I bet if you have seen a video of mine, you've probably heard me raving about this series. It is just so good. Uh, I did do a review of just the first book. So if you've seen that, this might be a little bit repetitive because I'm just going to be singing its praises. <laughs> Keep watching my spoiler free thoughts on this series. So this is a three book series by Curtis Craddock and these books came out between 2017 and 2020. The books are in order, uh, An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors, A Labyrinth of Scions and Sorcery, and The Last Uncharted Sky. So these books take place in a world that has basically been kind of broken apart and there are all of these floating islands that everyone lives on and there are airships in order to get between these islands. There are different groups of people on all of these islands and each group of people has a different kind of magic that is present in the highborn people of the, those groups. Uh, so the ruling people have magic. And so it follows Isabel, who is the niece of the king of one of these groups, and Jean-Claude, who was charged by the king with protecting Isabel. And so it basically starts off when Isabel's born. Most of the story takes place when she's a, like in her mid-twenties, I would say. So there are all different kinds of like magic in the story. There are also airships, like I mentioned. There's ancient magical artifacts that really are very rare and still work after thousands of years and people don't really know how they work necessarily. So there's that kind of mystery element to it. And so even though this is a trilogy and like the books definitely relate, each book kind of has its own central plot going on. Though like characters, overarching themes, all that definitely carries over throughout all three books. So I want to start off by talking about the characters because the characters may be my favorite part of the series. It's so hard to decide because I love everything about it. <laughs> So like I said, you follow Isabel as one of the main characters and she is born with a kind of like a birth defect. She had one on one of her hands, she only has one finger. So people view her as abnormal and treat her that way as well for various reasons. So even though she is highborn, she doesn't really get treated that way by anyone. Uh, so she definitely has had a difficult upbringing. Because of that, she is so like resilient and strong and she's also one of the smartest characters I've ever read about. She is book smart, I guess I would say. There's so much of this world that relies on like physics and math and she just knows all of it and it is great. Especially it's kind of a world where women are not really allowed to do those things. So she is like, well, I'm gonna do it anyway. I have quotes this time. So one quote about Isabel that I think sums up her smarts and also her like kind of rebellious nature is this from the first book. Isabel hesitated. The book of instructions was the temple's holy book, its secrets forbidden to women. Isabel had therefore made a point of reading it cover to cover, painstakingly translating every passage. Like, girl, I love you. She is just great. Even though she is treated pretty poorly by her family and everyone, she is still highborn so she does kind of have privilege and she's a little bit naive about the world at the beginning of this series. So seeing her growth throughout the series, oh my god, it's so good. And like all the things that she goes through and how she gets out of them and how she uses her smarts to, to get out of situations, it's just so good. She has definitely become one of my favorite characters. I love her so much. And then there's also John claude He... It's hard to decide which which of these two characters I like more because they are both so likable. So Jean claude is the king's musketeer. So he does know how to fight but he gets kind of assigned to protect Isabel and He's been doing that for many years, so he's not necessarily like out fighting every day. So he kind of, at the beginning, paints this picture of himself as like a drunkard. 
so everyone underestimates him but he uses that to his advantage so i would also say that jean claude is incredibly smart he is definitely not book smart like isabelle and he will readily admit that but he is so clever with how people perceive him and playing with people's perceptions of him in order to get what he wants and i think that is just so cool oh, i adore him he doesn't go through as much of a journey like a change as Isabella would say throughout the series because he is an adult when the series starts so he is maybe in his 40s or 50s by like the main part of the series but I still loved him and also another thing about the characters that I just love is their relationship so Isabella does not have a great relationship with her father because he's garbage <laughs> so jean claude is there for her entire life so he basically becomes her foster father almost but in every way other than like physical <laughs> jean claude is isabelle's father and it is just so touching to see that bond like they are the definition of found family to me because they are not related at all but he goes like above and beyond being a father to Isabel. <laughs> Why am I getting emotional about this? Like he sees her as a daughter, she sees him as a father. It is just great. There are also quite a few side characters in the series that I love, mostly in the second two books we get introduced to some new characters that I just adore. So there's three characters that I'm thinking of, which I don't want to say who they are for spoilers. All three of them kind of have like tragic things that have happened to them and they are still I don't know it's like so heartbreaking to hear about but they're still trying to help Isabella and what she's doing and just the relationships that they also form also so many other elements of found family that I just loved Ugh. like especially in the third book when you're introduced to all, like you know all the characters already everything that's happening you're just like oh my god I just cared so much about the characters next up I want to talk about the setting I did kind of already talk about this but just to elaborate a little bit more I did find some of the world building a little bit hard to follow in the first book but I don't think that really impacted my enjoyment of the series and definitely if I reread it I think I wouldn't I would understand it fully uh it just can be a little bit complicated uh if you start reading this book and you are kind of bogged down by the science of it don't let that stop you because it's not that it's unimportant but it's not going to stop you from understanding everything else if you don't understand the science that they're talking about so like i said there are floating islands and i just thought the whole way that that world was set up was fascinating it's not just like oh we can just fly over to that other island they have to actually like use the air currents and all these different things in navigation in order to fly which i think is so cool the ways that the towns are set up it's just fascinating there are like towns on the edges of the cliffs of these islands like you fall off that you're just falling into empty space there i think there was a description of a building that had windows that just go out to the nothingness like what do they call it like the vortex and like that's so cool just the whole way that this world is set up i think is fascinating there are also a ton of different types of magic so you slowly get introduced to them in the series in the first book there's really only two that you hear about and then you slowly get introduced to a, a couple of other magic types throughout the series so you definitely kind of take baby steps into that which is good but I just the different magics I think were fascinating so in the first book the main type of magic that you hear about which is introduced pretty quickly I think in the first chapter so it's not really a spoiler but the royal people will have blood shadows so instead of their shadow just being gray it is like blood red and they can control it and they can also attack other people's shadows and either kill them that way or turn them into these kinds of like husks of people that they can then inhabit so cool there are a ton of other different cool magic and magics in here one other thing i just wanted to note that like has no bearing on anything um is that because there's just this big vortex of air there are like animals that live like flying animals that live in there which so there's different like kinds of animals which i just think is so cool <laughs> I, they mentioned like flying fish at some point or like 
air fish. I'm like, that's so cool. It has no use anywhere in the book, but I just think that's cool. Next up, I wanna talk about the plot. Uh, so like I said before, each book kind of has its own plot. The first two I would say are mysteries. And then I don't really wanna say what the last one is just for spoilers, but I, they are kind of all contained in their own books, I would say. But then there definitely are things in the future books that kind of like build off of what happened. It is a series, like you do want to read one, then the second, then the third. Stuff that happens is resolved in the first, then in the second, then in the third. So because of that, you could just read An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors and pretty much call it a day after that, which I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could because the plot of this book gets resolved in this book. I don't really have any like notes on the pacing. I didn't have any sort of issue with it and I didn't notice anything about it. So I think they're well paced. And then lastly, I want to talk about the writing. Now, writing is not normally something I really care a whole lot about. I typically enjoy pretty straightforward writing because if writing is too flowery or metaphorical, I get lost. I am just like, what is happening? Is this actually what's happening? It drives me a little nuts. So uh, normally pretty writing is not what I go for. And I wouldn't necessarily say these books have pretty writing, but they have such clever writing. I, it's like every word I feel like Curtis Craddock intentionally chose, which I loved. There were just so many sentences where I was just like, oh my God, I wouldn't have never thought to describe something that way. But I love the way he describes things. Let me see if I can find a quote because I know in my review of Al Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors I hadn't prepared any quotes but I definitely tabbed the second two so let me see if I can find one from there. Okay this is the beginning of a chapter in the Labyrinth of Science and Sorceries. The wind raced through the crowd in Conqueror's Square like a pickpocket, stealing people's breath away and spearing the deep sounding of the noonday bells with a hollow groan. It's like those like similes, I guess. <laughs> Great. Uh, there are just so many quotes. Like I tabbed like these books so much because there are just so many lines that I love. Here's another one. I might edit this out. We'll see. This is a character. One of my favorite characters talking. The world is full of tragedies. So many that you could not count them all. They are the dark between the stars, but one does not gaze at the sky to see the darkness. I could excuse me that's so good so the writing for the series is top notch in my opinion it is just so carefully crafted so clever it can be heart-wrenching one moment and hilarious the next i loved it so those are pretty much all my non-spoiler thoughts about the series i loved it I cried at the end just because it was over. I did not want to let go of these characters. I love them so much. I can absolutely see myself rereading the series sometime. It was just great. I highly recommend it. I've been like scouring social media to see if Curtis Craddock is writing anything else because oh my god I would pick it up like there's no thought even. It's beyond auto buy, like it's just, I need it right now. I was looking on Tor's website because these are published by Tor and haven't found anything, haven't found anything on his website. So if you know, if Curtis Craddock is writing anything else, please tell me because I wanna read it. So, <laughs> I got ahead of myself a little bit. So the people I recommend this series for are basically, I don't wanna say everyone because I don't know if everyone would particularly like it, but if you're looking for great characters with really, complex but also great relationships definitely recommend it if you want good clever writing and if you want a super interesting world if any of those things appeal to you if anything in this review that i've said has appealed to you please check out this series it is so good so good <laughs> i love it if you have read this series please let me know what your thoughts on it are but that is it for me today and i'll see you all next time bye